Hello folks, well this is going to be something different because I've never done a make on AH27 unlike the mobile they don't have some dodgy battery inside which ruins the set and these work quite well, they work very well on their own aerial so we've never done one of these so we've never done an on the air test and we've never done a field test I do own uh, the realistic version and the realistic version if we look at the service manual is a TRC 1014 for the 40 channel one and then when CPT came along the one approved for 80 channel operation is a TRC 1015 I would expect I don't know whether this is 40 or 80 channel it says 80 on the back so that's what it is PR 27 97 so I would expect the only difference between the two models will be the way the, the synthesizer is programmed so I don't expect there's anything physical. Now, Mark, who comes here from time to time, um, always services the Maycom AH27s and the TRC1014s. I like the way they've got a TNC on the top. We've got a TNC to BNC adapter, so we can run it into the test rig. Um, and as such, I've never had to touch one. This belongs to a farmer, and I'd like a quicker turnaround than than three months so yeah we can have long stayers here we can have long stayers for a year um, when we're waiting for parts or whether they've got really silly little faults which take a lot of time because we've only got 40 minute sessions per day to spend on two-way radio at the end of the day um, I'm a church organ builder and a church organist um, and I used to be full-time two-way radio and part-time um, organ building and we swapped it round. So yes I'm qualified but it's not the thing I do day to day all day. So having got the realistic manual here or calling it Radio Shack by this time um, so that it reckons to do four watts. I don't know but they work well. So the only way, it's come with the battery pack, it's come with the aerial. I thought it was six batteries, in which case it's nine volts, in which case it's two watts. Anyway, we're running off the power supply and we'll run it on 12 volts. But it does say 12 volts, it doesn't say 13.8, so let's just see what the maximums are. Oh yeah, yeah, we can run it up to 15.6, so we can run it at 13.8. So, well, fair enough. So it's intermittent to uh, transmit, probably simply the PTT switch. But what I'm not going to do is just say, well, I fixed it without actually servicing it. One, two, there's quite some adjustments in there. There's a round the corner chip for you. Right, so we'll put the power supply, I'll put the power supply on 12 volts. I know it says 13.8, but we'll just run it up with the crocodile clip leads. I don't know whether they ever did any battery adapters to enable you to service these a bit easier. Oh, it does silly little songs. So that's full scale deflection. We're getting three watts. Uh, I'm absolutely sure these people use um, UK channels only. So I'll optimise it on channel 20. Otherwise I'll be I'll have to charge them more because we have a different tariff when we do 80 channels. It's more of a faff.
They only live about 20 miles from here, so we dropped it round personally last time. So that's 0 0.3 microvolts we can hear. Right, I'll go and get myself a piece of paper. We'll write down some of the parameters it's doing. Right, so I'm back on with this, and we will just take in a local customer's Midland 48 in. No transmit. Last time we had a Midland 48 in, I didn't bother showing you the video because it was a strange modified version and it was a no hoper. Right, so we're at 13.8 volts and in transmit now it is doing 3.5 watts and on it's got the channels have well, I gone down one? Well, I have no idea what I'm doing 3.5 watts on channel 1 and on channel 40 when I get it to transmit 3.45 3 but it might be dropping because it's getting warm it's got high low power if you know how to activate it it's so small I'm going to have to put some I have prescription glasses which I'm wearing right now but I also have some easy readers which are more powerful it saves me going around with magnifying glass high low that'll be it so we'll go to channel 20 and in Not point nine watts. It's supposed to be one watt, isn't it? I, I think we uh, saw. It's not governed. This isn't like zero point four watts on low power on CB twenty seven eighty one says. This is the next major legislation. It's, it's um, twenty seven ninety four, isn't it? Uh, twenty seven ninety seven, isn't it? So it's eighty channel. Uh, TX current back to high power. And it's 997 milliamps. Deviation for what it's worth on this test set. Wallow. None. Wallow. No, oh, I've oh, got to tune this or something. Wallow, wallow. It's 1.5. I'll put it there because we're not sure. We're not going to be doing VCO. And the frequency and the test gear has been on now for about two hours. Let's go over to the frequency counter. 27.79117. I mean, that is so spot on, isn't it? Receive. Set the signal generator to the same. So, I mean, to be honest, it's pretty spot on, isn't it? You wouldn't, if we did an on the air test with this and then we did an on the air test after servicing, there'd be no difference. A bit like the G call, the video of which hasn't been published yet because I've had a Windows 10 update and now the video. Uh, editing software instead of taking 45 minutes to render the finished video it's taking two and a half days right we'll get this plugged into the sign meter Just like that. Oh, this is brilliant. Three six.
0.32 we've had 10 miles once on one of these just to me mobile we've had 14 miles on one of these just on its own aerial so we I say we must dig out one of our own ones and do a, a proper field test now squelch we'll find out won't we Yeah, well, it's much more than I thought. It's two point five millivolts. Too far, too high. And the threshold. Point seven six. I don't know whether it's auto, whether it's preset. As I said, Mark's always done these. It's one point five. It's probably about where it should be. Um. S9, I don't know how this is calibrated, it's in threes so it's a bit, it looks like it's got lots of bars but they're in threes, um, it's 215 microvolts for S9 which is a bit tight and in transmit what does it mean It go, it's, I don't even know if it's got a power meter, whether that's just programmed to say that. I'll put full-scale deflection because that's what it's doing. So we've got intermittent TX. Right, so that's gone through it. It's a nicely working set. So I want it to be a nicely working set when I've done with it, don't I? absolutely no idea I might just have to see what the manual says obviously we're going to take these screws out I can't remember whether you have to take knobs off or anything else that's my query. So let's see what screws we've got. That's that length. The same length. The same length. Well, that's good, isn't it? And there's a little screw here where the belt, uh, the, the lanyard goes. got to be aware of this because there's a spring uh, somewhere there is and there we have it the output device is to SC2078 
So what we need to get down to before doing any tune-up is what's up with this. Oh yeah, they, this, that brings me, I just said, I have just said, we'll have a look what's up with this. And in Britain, if I say to you, what's up, that means you look upset and worried. And I'm asking you how you are, what's, um, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking so... When I look at American things, as people start the video, what's up? What's up? Why? Were we all, are we all looking ill or something? I don't get it. So this is the PTT switch. So has it come unsoldered or is it knackered? So I think we'll, we'll start by reflowing it in case that's what the problem is. Let's get it connected back up to the test gear. I'm not bothered what channel it's on, I'm just, um, it's just a matter of trying to uh, see what's happening with the PTT switch. So I'll put the picture in picture onto the main meter, now what we can see it going into transmit. So you can see, I press this, and it's, it's pretty intermittent. So are we going to have to replace that switch by ordering one? And that would be fun, wouldn't it? I bet I've got to order 25. So we'll take the power off. I hope to do this on Mr. Chippy's bench where there's some finer solder. It's one millimetre solder on this bench. You see, you couldn't go into this and sort this out without doing the service, could you? Yes, Mr. Tango, of course you could. It's like taking an organ out of a church and moving it to another church and taking it down to all those 15,000 parts and then not doing any clean and overhaul work. Right, power back on. So it's just as bad. So we've got another chance before having to order one. And that's dismantle it. Now Mr Chippy's not here today, it's Saturday. So, what I want to do is dismantle the switch and apply switch cleaner. I'm going to go over to Mr. Chippy's bench, we'll pause the video, and I'll dismantle it with a scalpel I'm going to pretend to be a surgeon. Right, so I'm back from Mr. Chippy's bench. So we're going to now see what happens. So I took the switch apart with a scalpel and I've cleaned all the components. I've not done switch cleaner. I've actually cleaned all the pot components and put it back together. Uh, and I can see the difference with my eye, let alone uh, a technical thing. So I think that's going to be it. Otherwise, we're going to be ordering parts and it's going to be an eternity and an expense it's not that the switch is a it's not the problem that the switch is a, a 25 pence or whatever or 48 pence it's a it's the quantity you've got to order
Right, power it up. And we'll press the transmit button straight away. No wiggling around. Absolutely perfect. So that's fixed it. So that's what it's come in for. So we'll do some service work. Let's see what the book of words says. I think we ordered this from Knights when they did circuit diagrams. This is what I could do with the second, page 12. T90, 10, T11 is transmit power. T9, 10, and 11. But we'll try and have this the same way on. So 9, 10, where's 11? There. So I've got to press the transmit button. I think I need to reduce this to 12 volts, don't I? Yes, Mr. Tango, I think you do. It says at 12 volts, high power should be 4 watts. So we'll go to 12 volts. I'm going to have to do it this way on. It's 3.4 and 11 already lost it it's that one and it's not quite showing through the can exactly where you'd expect it to be that's not going to adjust so I'm not going to break it now it's an overall power control. And RV105. So RV 105, 106, 104, 101, RV 4, That doesn't make sense because RV105, uh, VR105, is volume control or squelch or whatever. Why can't I see it? Well, it says RV104's power adjust. It doesn't say RV105 at all. It says RV104. So 
So that's the first printing error. And 104 is there. There we go. That's exactly 4 watts. Now I just need to check it on 13.8 volts to make sure that it hasn't gone over on 13.8. No, it's spot on. So we'll go back to 12 volts. Good. So we need to make sure it's on frequency. And it's CT2. CT2 is on the other side. Now it's so close. Let's go to the frequency counter. It's so close. Let's just see what it is now. On channel 1. Take the front off. So hopefully CT2 is the upper one. Seven nine one two four. I'm going to do deviation on the other test set. It looks a bit low to me. I know this deviation meter can play up, but it still looks a bit low to me. So we've got RV4, which we think is Squelch preset, the one I've been messing with. We've got RV101, whatever that does. We've got RV1, got 104, we've got RV106. We've only got an RV2. Six there is deviation. So on my block diagram on my left, it says 106 is deviation. But the manual says RV2, and the manual also says RV4. And you know what? That's where you'd expect it to be. So now we'll adjust that. Right. And then I'll show you what I've done. Wallow. I've lost the power again. Wallow. That's better. Right, I've got 2.2. It was about 1.7. See what it says now on this meter. Let's go to that meter. in case this is working today while it is working today it's exactly where it should be it says 2.4 on that one so we'll go with that so it was uh, it was actually 1.7 kilohertz and it's now 2.1 to 2.4 kilohertz now Auto squelch was exactly where we wanted it to be, and now it isn't because I've messed up the control because the manual was wrong.
the buttons have fallen out on the floor somewhere as well. Oh no, they haven't. They're here. Look, there's the buttons. Go to the test equipment. I tell you what, the customer's going to be astonished to how well this works when they get it back. Bringing that deviation up from there. So let's see what the service manual says we have to do. And let's hope it's not lying. So it's one, two, four, and five. So five's going to be the detector because it says it's the IF board. So I don't know what three does, but you don't touch it. We'll start with the detector, put the oscilloscope on, and we'll go to the oscilloscope and just see if we can maximise that. That was already spot on. Yes, always right to check it. I've not the signal drain to our frequency. Because my hands are too big. And get about 4 dB. So it's 1. can't even see where we're putting it. signal that's one and two and that's four No change there. So let's see where we are for twelve DB. Not point four five. That's worse. What's happened there then? Is it because I'm not holding the set? Let's see if we can take the shield plate off so I can actually see what I'm doing. We'll just turn the power off. We've been never having seen inside one of these before. Now we can see what we're doing. And can you see they've sealed this through number three? We don't need touching that. Right, power back on. We have to find channel 20 again.
So these are so small that these tools aren't fitting in. So we can do that one. So in actual fact we never touched those two. Just see if I can budge them with the wrong kind of tool. Right, well that seems to have got it for my optimum so we'll just take the power off again and put this shield plate back Surprise there isn't thermal heat compound and what we've got to do is that strapping rod there uh, that, that strap's got to go so that the screw goes through that for the case that's how it picks up its another bit of earth right we'll power it back up and see whether it's better worse or what mind you we've got to find channel 20 again yeah? not 0.41 I think the only fair thing to do is to take those readings once it's put back together again uh, right so squelch because I've messed that up let's have a look what it says squelch is RV2 But then it says signal meters RV2. They didn't know which was which, did they? They've made this up. Tanzer said you've got to do it as a manual or else, and they've done a manual, but it's wrong. So as far as I'm concerned, RV101 is likely to be squelch, and, and the one which I inadvertently did is going to be preset squelch. That's how I see it. Um, and the S meter is probably RV1. So put the squelch to full. Put the signal generator to 100 microvolts. And then adjust RV101, which I think is squelch preset, till we actually have squelch action. So I'm right. 100 microvolts, where I want it. Right, preset squelch, want that back to 1.5 microvolts. So we're now in preset squelch. There's one microvolt, 
there's three. I want it to open at one and a half. as it did before. So we'll adjust the preset on the side. Hmm. That's one and a half, I've got it in the wrong position. So it just comes on, which is there. That's got the squelch back to how it was, which is how I want it. So, the meter, there isn't a transmit meter, it is a fake meter. Macon were the first to do fake meters. Um, so the meter has got to be the remaining preset there on the board. So let's see what it says for S9. Turn the volume down. And it says 7. So we need to bring that up a bit. This is fun. So you put your tool in there. And that's actually full. So it's not how we want it. But I've got it to it was what was it before? Two hundred and fifteen microvolts. That's worse. Well, I've got, it says 240. I think we'll put the thing back together, but that is the maximum it will do. Right, so we are set up. Let's take the power off. So, because the meter is so wrong, it's a meter. The meter's not so wrong. Because the service manual was so wrong, the conclusion was the preset at the side is ex exactly what you'd expect. It's the preset squelch. We've set that for one and a half microvolts. The preset, this is the preset preset squelch. What you'd call auto squelch, but it's not really auto squelch. It's preset squelch. The squelch sensitivity for the main control, for the master, for the manual control, is that one, which says RV101 on the manual, but I don't know whether it is. And the sensitivity alignment for the uh, receiver is transformer 1, 2 and 4. And 3 you never touch. So transformer 11, 9, 10 and 11 was doing a tune-up of the transmitter. Followed by RV104 which is the power output preset. So it's how we've got a full 4 watts. Um, you haven't got 1 watt separately. It's in line with, um, it, it's just in sympathy. We'll go through that uh, and see what the result is. Now we've got four watts going out of the set. So we've got RV106, which I've just been doing, is, the, is down there and is the S meter. RV1... I've already forgotten what it was. Oh, no, RV1 was the S meter. RV106 is the deviation. That's deviation, that's S meter. So that's the thing gone through it. What a faff. But deviation is the one in, in uh, 
down there and then the frequency was on the front panel and it was the upper one good This is in very nice condition, considering these are 20 years old now. I think we've got to put this in before we put that cover on. Put the spring in there. Oh no, the spring's going to be that way on, isn't it? Does it go in this half? I'm not sure which half we load this into. If I hold on to that, get the that in, put the bottom in. Whoa! Go to the top of the class and jump off. I think we'll start putting that screw in before that spring. It tries to escape. There's a little teeny weeny screw for the lanyard. Yes, there is. Good. Right, let's get it back on. Final test. Power on, 12 volts, channel 20. Right, let's see what the receiver is. So the S meter is now for, for S nine it is now. 170 microvolts which is nearer that is the most sensitive we can get out of it the 
transmit is fake. So we press transmit, swings across, it's FSD, fake TX meter, just like modern sets are. So let's see what the sign ad now is. Turn the squelch down. Helps with plug the test gear in, doesn't it? Not point three nine. Not point three four. Not point nine. So those show the figures very slightly inferior to what we had before. But I did reset the de the detector, so this is what happens. So we've got the clarity. This is this is very good. Um Squelch. So I've got full squelch on. And it's hundred microvolts where I want it to be. So that's just what I wanted. Now squelch sensitivity. So we'll turn the squelch down. Turn the signal generator down. Let's put the attenuator on the screen. And set threshold on the radio. Switch the signal generator back on. It's actually coming in at 0.3. I'll say 0.35 because it's chattering. Just check we've still got deviation. Wallo, we have. So our transmit power turn the volume down, transmit power. We're on channel twenty. It's actually doing four point one, uh, but it's Of course, it's cold now. Channel 40, 4.1. Channel 1, 4.1. As a courtesy, we'll put it into CPT. And on channel 1, CPT is doing 4 watts. We're not testing CPT. Um, and on low power, find channel 20, and we've got on low power 0 0.9, exactly as it was before. Our transmit current is now 1.09, so it's gone up 10 milliamps to give us half a watt more which is pretty efficient um, I think, is that it? I think that is it oh auto squelch I've got it as 1.6 so I've just about got it back to where it was. So it's uh, dismantle PTT switch. Good. What a faff though. Let's uh, Let's put it on the aerial. Let's see if we've got any bad bugs. I can't do an on the air test for a bit and let's say we're struggling editing anything. We do have editing software to do these videos and different editing software to do all the picture in picture stuff from the cameras we use in the car.
one on a Roger. Notice how nobody changes channel. It's not one nine for Fred Blogs. Yeah, you got Fred Blogs, knock it up one. It's unusable, isn't it? But there we have it. A splendid make on EA AH27 in lovely condition. And now back to the land of the living. Thanks for watching.